like the Indian stock market, but I was always curious if we could replicate the same concepts for like an international market or something like that. So just our curiosity led to these talks and we had already heard of these names before. So you're like, might not just try these analysis. Uh, coming back to what the S&P 100 is, it's like just how we have like the Nifty 50, which is the top 50 stocks in our country. The S&P 100 is an organization which is like S&P, which ranks like the top 100 companies in terms of like market capitalization and also other factors in terms of why are the top 100 companies of that particular country, in this case, USA. Uh, thank you, Karan. And thank you, Pranav. Uh, so for the rest of us, we were just starting now. It's three. Uh, it's 2.35 already. Uh, so guys, the idea simply is that, uh, you know, if we have our videos on, if possible, uh, if it's not, then perfectly all right. But if possible, and if we, if we can have our videos on, the presenters would feel more connected. It's very difficult to talk to a laptop. Trust me. I mean, uh, I've, I've done that so many times and it's really very difficult to talk to a laptop. So if we would like to support our presenters here and if you would like to uh, go ahead and just, uh, you know, turn on our video, it would be really amazing. Uh, Karan and Pranav, I'm starting the presentation. Just okay. confirm once you're able to see it. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you, would you prefer in this mode or would you want me to go in the presentation mode? So you can move into the presentation. We'll let you know when to change the slide. Okay. Guys, are you able to see the, see the presentation? Yes. Great. Please go ahead. Over to you. So good afternoon, everyone. I am Pranav Lamba with Karan Arora. I here to present on PNG and Walmart. So we won't be briefing you about the technicals of the company as we recommend you this as a long-term investment, but we will be telling you about the fundamentals of the company. So, so next slide. First, we have PNG. So, next slide. Yeah, just give me a second. I'm trying to give you the remote access. Sure. Okay, I'm not able to. No issues. That's right. So, uh, about PNG, uh, PNG is basically an American multinational, multinational consumer goods corporation headquartered in Ohio. It was founded by William Proctor and James Gamble, incorporated in 1837. It specializes in a wide range of personal health, consumer health, and personal care products. Their main purpose is to provide a sense of trust in millions of households with their trusted brands. Coming to the business model. So a business model is from where a company generates its revenue. Now here we can see 39% of the revenue is generated from North America out of which 35% is contributed by the US. Then we have Eastern, uh, Western Europe at 18% and the remaining for, uh, we have at 43%. Also, sorry, also no other individual country generates more than 10% of revenue for Procter & Gamble other than US. Further drilling down into the segment wise revenue, First, we have fabric and home care at 29%, followed by baby, feminine and family at 27%, then beauty, hair and personal at 24%, followed by healthcare at 11%, and lastly, grooming at 9%. Coming to the product portfolio of PNG, now I'm sure almost all of you must have used at least one of the PNG's products, be it Pampers for babies, Ace, Ariel as detergents, Pantene and Head and Shoulders for shampoo and whatnot. Over to Karan. Okay. Thank you, Pranav. Uh, moving on to the strategy analysis, the investment strategy that we decided for Procter & Gamble is that of a growth stock. And this is especially because it has a significantly high return on equity. Now, what return on equity is, I'll be explaining a bit more in the upcoming slides. Well, if we see Procter & Gamble in terms of its value, it is currently priced lower than its intrinsic value. Uh, so getting in now anytime and buying it and holding it for a good five years at least is, is, is a good strategy. But uh, I, it's my duty to like highlight the fact that it's a bit slightly overpriced right now because of the COVID earnings, but still, like I mentioned, that it's still uh, below its intrinsic value. So it's a good hold right now. 
and the confidence level that we recommend is high, which is confirmed in this case. Uh, so next slide. Uh, talking about the quantitative analysis, as I mentioned that we'll be using the growth investing strategy here. Now, before I go into the details of like the accepted ratios and what are the thresholds that we should use for these ratios, I just want to highlight the fact that Procter & Gamble is listed on the New York Stock Exchange in the US. So the threshold bands that we're going to take into consideration here will be the ones that we usually take for the India market. And the reason for this is the source of the capital that we'll be investing in these markets that is the US market will be coming from India in our case. So that's why we'll be referring to the threshold values or the acceptable bands that we use for the Indian market. So without another way, let's, let's look at the numbers here. The price to earnings is not taken into consideration for a growth stock. The debt to equity ratio here is 0.51 and the acceptable is usually anything less than 0.5. Are we marking it as a good or a yes in this case because currently it's a short term debt to meet the COVID-19 cost that they're entering. So 0 0.51, 0 0.5 is well under the threshold belt for the debt to equity ratio. Next comes the interest to coverage uh, ratio, which highlights the capability or the potential of a company to pay off its debt. Uh, it should be greater than five ideally for any company, which is marked as good. And here for Procter & Gamble, it's around 18.44. Uh, the gross profit margin and the operating profit margin for Procter & Gamble is stable year on year. And it is considered a fairly good sign for a company. And moreover, the gross profit margin here is in fact growing, which is even a better sign. Like it's stable, but stably growing. So it's a great sign for Procter & Gamble when it comes to gross profit and operating profit margin. Uh, so the return on equity here, uh, before I tell what the return on equity is, so let me just give you what an idea of a return on equity is. So as a business, the return on equity means the, the percentage return that I can expect if I have to invest uh, in that company as, as an organization here. So here it is 17% uh, and the acceptable ratio is 15% and this is the reason why we are treating it as a growth stock. The sales growth for Procter & Gamble is also growing and especially even more now because of the COVID-19 sales that the company uh, is getting, which we saw from the reports in the previous quarter, which we'll be discussing more in, in the further slides. Uh, however, the net income for Procter & Gamble has been on a slight dec decline. Uh, the reason for this is because of the Gillette write down, which happened in the past few quarters, and they're still making up for that. And also the cost of sales for Procter & Gamble records about 50% of the revenue. And now with these small and uh, payment structures that they have been trying to overcome over these past quarters, uh, the recent figures and numbers are showing a steady increase to happen in all these things. So we can see a steady growth trend. But right now, since we don't have enough information and they're in the process of going in the right track when it comes to net income, we just marked it as cannot save for the time being. Uh, moving on to like the quantitative, uh, the qualitative analysis for Procter & Gamble, we believe there's a huge moat, uh, which is the brand recall and recognition. Now for anyone who the, for whom the term moat is new, moat usually means the stickiness to a brand or the competitive edge that a company has over its other competitors in the industry. So for Procter & Gamble uh, is a well-known brand and also is a parent company to a lot of well-known na names and brands that even we know here in India. So imagine the, 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 the name and the brand that they've established in the US. So many companies like Gillette, uh, like Pampers, Wix, Head & Shoulders, Pantene, all these come under Procter & Gamble. And the great thing about PNG's moat is PNG has a moat in itself. The brand, also the, the brands that PNG is a parent company to, all the names that I mentioned, are and have a moat in themselves as well, which is a great sign. Um, speaking of the competitive advantage for Procter & Gamble, our research shows that the threat to new entrants here is between low and moderate. We are keeping it moderate here on the safe side because although on one hand, it's difficult to replicate the size and the share economics of such a large scale company such as Procter & Gamble, we believe a new entrant can come and uh, possess a threat to a small portion or a category of products that Procter & Gamble deals with. So therefore we are marking it as moderate here because there's always a potential that a certain category of Procter & Gamble might be in threat because of a new entrant. Uh, for the bargaining power of buyers and suppliers is both low here because again, because of the sheer size and economies of scale of Procter & Gamble and there's no dearth of like a buyer and supply in such a market. Uh, the threat to substitute products uh, we marked here as low now, uh, 
I am sure quite a few might argue that it is easy for a customer to move to another brand because of the low switching cost here. Uh, however, it's not going to bring any major change into the larger economy. So Procter & Gamble, uh, because of the likes of a few hundred in such area, and moreover, Procter & Gamble itself is creating competing products within itself to increase its market share. For example, for a Pantene, there's a head and shoulders. For an Ariel, there is a Tide. And for a Crest, they have Oral-B. So they're creating competing products within themselves as well. So the threat of substitute product, according to us, is quite low here. Uh, rivalry among competitors, although here, is very high, like I mentioned. Not just for like the entire company as a whole, but uh, existing competitor or many competitors can come to threaten a certain product category that Procter & Gamble deals with. A good example that I can give you is like the recent times uh, Procter & Gamble is facing heavy competition in its disinfectants and like uh, the basic supplies for COVID-19 and companies such as Clorox are coming up and giving a tough competition. So these product category basis competition would remain and would change from time to time varying on like the different product categories that Procter & Gamble deals with. Uh, the good sign for this is that it will give a room for enough innovation on like for all the companies. But we believe that the threat to competition in this case is quite high, again, based on like a certain product categories. Uh, for the so next slide, please. Uh, furthermore, on the qualitative analysis end, uh, we take a look at the shareholding pattern. And Procter & Gamble is majorly institutionally held and also has a decent dividend per share distribution rate. Uh, our research about like the company's management uh, did not bring up any red flags. And it's a fairly good management that, that we saw based on like the news which is available in the media and about the people who are there on the board for Procter & Gamble. Uh, but there are a few minor media scrutinies, again, because of the firm's size and scale of operations. A certain department or something has always come under the spotlight because of the, the sheer size of the company. Uh, the gross profit margin, as we saw in the operating profit margin, is growing and steady, which is, like I mentioned, is a fairly good sign for the company. And uh, recently, Procter & Gamble released its quarter's earnings for the previous quarter, and they are doing some really, really great business, especially because of the COVID-19 thing. And the good thing is the changes that they're making within the organization are going to continue even after uh, the COVID-19 has hopefully gone by. Uh, so I think all in all, it is a really good sign for the company as a whole. And now back to Kana. So summing up the qualitative analysis, PNG has its operations in about 80 countries and its well-known trusted brands touch lives of millions in about 180 countries. The sales and earnings improved year over year in reported quarter. The top line gained from organic sales growth. Procter & Gamble partnered with Shop, a leading e-commerce platform in South Asia, Southeast Asia and Taiwan. Uh, the shares of Procter & Gamble have gained 5.2% in the past year against the industry's decline of 0.6%. Now over to Karan again. Um, thanks, Pranav. Now it's time for the next company that we're looking into in terms of the fundamental analysis, and that is Walmart. Uh, so next slide. Walmart is like the largest retail corporation that operates in a chain of supermarkets and discounted stores and whose aim is to provide very low prices to its customers all year round. Uh, Walmart does not only deal with brick and mortar stores anymore and has been expanding into the e-commerce zone like year after year and is fairly doing very well now. Uh, it is a family owned business run by the Walton family, which was started in 1962 by Sam Walton. And Walmart is not just the world's largest retailer, it is also the largest private employer in the world with around 2.2 million employees. So talking about the business model for Walmart, uh, Walmart majorly operates in three entities, which is Walmart US, Walmart International and Sam's Club. Sam's Club is a membership only retail warehouse club, which is owned by Walmart. So the basic business model for Walmart is that Walmart is ready to offer all year round low prices to its customers, thereby increasing its uh, loyal customer base which it then uses to leverage uh, this large customer base with its suppliers to order large quantities of products at a cheaper rate, which in turn it is able to provide these products to its customers at these low discounted rates. And hence, this is this is a cycle, which is basically the business model in the simplest form for Walmart. But as you can see, there is a lot more to Walmart than just this. Uh, it has introduced like expedited delivery. You have digital advertising business that Walmart is into. 
uh, it is into a streaming and payment platform business and is slowly and slowly expanding into various different areas so that it is not just like a brick and mortar store image that it has been for so many years and the key differentiator for this business is like the ease of access for walmart and uh, i by ease of access what i mean is that each american household is within at least 15 minute radius of one walmart outlet store uh, which is like quite a good thing for brand to maintain and apart from this uh, walmart also has great product assortment with extremely detailed category sections if you visit a walmart store and even the e-commerce section now uh, moving on to the next slide sir uh, so the portfolio for walmart as a company is like walmart caters to more than 265 million customers on a weekly basis through the 11500 stores spread across 27 countries it has large number of partnerships and buyouts as well like shoes.com and a very famous flipkart in india which was the largest e-commerce buyout and uh, walmart as a company has more than 30 product categories and further down many sub categories so you can have products ranging from baby care to electronics or from toys to clothing and accessories uh, now back to pranav right so coming to strategy and analysis the investment strategy used for walmart is growth uh, the current price of walmart is below intrinsic value and hence it's a buy the confidence level is confirmed so next slide so karan has already briefed you about all the uh, ratios and parameters but i'll be going through them again the first ratio is price to earning break years which is 22.70 and we don't consider it for growth stock and i'll tell you why later debt to equity should be less than 0.5 and here it's 0.53 which is very manageable the interest coverage ratio is basically whether the company can uh, cover its interest expenses in future if they acquire any debt it should be more than five and here it's 9.08 gross profit margin is basically the profit of the company after deducting the selling expenses it is 24.5 percent and steady the operating exp uh, the operated uh, operating profit margin is profit of the company after deducting the operating expenses and it's 3.9 percent and has declined this year mainly due to the pandemic because uh, its operating income has decreased due to uh, the uh, the expenses they had to incur by providing more sanitation and uh, safety measures then we come to return on equity which is 18.80 percent so to distinguish between a growth stock and a stock we see whether the roe is more than 15 or not also uh, we don't consider pe as discussed earlier because now sales growth and net income both are rising from the past three years so next slide coming to the qualitative analysis what is moat so moat is basically stickiness to a brand or one's attraction towards a brand and moat for walmart is very high because as a consumer i would be attracted to go to a place where i'll get the same product at a cheaper rate than the market price and hence i'll be attracted towards walmart coming to the competitive advantage threat of new entrants is quite low because it's not feasible uh, to compete with a big brand like walmart to open huge chains of supermarkets and to compete by providing uh, uh, discounts then coming to the bargaining power of supplier which is low threat of substitute products is low because uh, walmart has its own chain of uh, products which they provide at cheaper rates than the competitors now again bargaining power of buyer is low rivalry among competitors is high because uh, as we all know when it comes to offline selling walmart is the king but walmart has recently uh, introduced e-commerce platforms and hence comp competing with big players like amazon is not easy so next slide one slide back coming to the shareholding pattern of the company the we first we have promoters so promoters are basically the owners of the company or the people who have started the business 
uh, it stands at 50.91% and is steady over the years. Pledge is basically whether the company has mortgaged any shares to the bank or not, and it should be zero. Then we have institutional investors, uh, which include domestic institutional investors and foreign institutional investors, and it stands at 30.95% and is steady. Uh, then we have mutual funds at 14.78%. And lastly, we have others, that is retail investors like you and me, and it should be as low as possible. And 3.36% here is excellent. So to conclude the management for Walmart, it is fairly good because the promoters shares have been steady over the years and the pledge is zero, which shows that the uh, promoters have confidence in their company. Also gross profit margin has been steady. But the operating profit margin has declined and that was due to the pandemic and decrease in operating income. Then we have uh, the company distributed an interim dividend of 2.12 per share on 19th May 2020. And also here are some of the recent corporate actions taken by the company. So next slide. Over to Karan. Okay, so to summarize what we know about Walmart so far, so Walmart has left a global footprint with its 11,500 stores spread across 27 countries. A Walmart share growth actually beat the industry average growth uh, in the last three months. And this is primarily due to the COVID-19 sales of the essential items that they've been doing. Also, like Pranav mentioned uh, repeatedly before that Walmart is trying to share its brick and mortar store image and has been moving into e-commerce and trying to compete with big names such as Amazon. And it is in the process of doing so with a lot of buyouts and partnerships. And one famous one, which I mentioned was like the 77% stake buyout in Flip, of Flipkart. Uh, the shareholding returns has been very well as it has been paying consistent dividend payout. And features which they are introducing now during COVID time, such as express delivery and exclusive benefits to Sam Club members is something that's also going to continue after the COVID times and which will also help company in its growth trajectory in its sales and all the other things because they are spending time right now in research and development and introducing these things. And also Walmart mentioned in their last quarter meeting that they are moving towards digital uh, like innovation within its stores as well. Like you have robots doing the warehousing stuff as well. And like they have a lot of scanners and stuff coming in thereby like moving into the digital upfront to compete with these big brands in the e-commerce section as well. Also the local ones. And uh, over the few quarters, Walmart has been consistently trying to pay out his long-term debt, thereby achieving financial stability. So this was what we know about like the fundamental analysis for these two companies, which is Procter and Gamble and uh, Walmart. Now, before we move on to the Q and a, I would just want to share a rough estimate of the future any uh, future projections for these two companies if you were to invest in them right now so the current price i'll talk about uh, procter and gamble first and then move on to walmart so for png the current price is us dollars 121 which is roughly around 9000 rupees per share and i'm saying if we were to invest rupees 1 lakh right now which is around 1300 us dollars in this one share for procter and gamble the projected five year value for uh, the projected five-year value for Procter & Gamble will be around 1,51,400 rupees. And 15-year value, your 1 lakh rupees which you had invested will now become 9 lakh and 17,000 rupees. And this is like for 1 lakh, approximately you can get about 11 shares of Procter & Gamble if you invest at the current price. So from 1 lakh to 9 lakh is, is a good growth for like a projected value that you can achieve in 15 years. Uh, for Walmart as well, since the current price is somewhat similar, around 119, which is around 8,800 rupees for the Indian uh, INR. And same, if you were to invest like 1 lakh rupees in Walmart right now, your projected 1 lakh will become right 9 lakh and 53,000 in 15 years. And of course, you can quit early like in 10 years and stuff, but you can see the difference yourself if you were to hold and have the capability and the capacity to hold on longer to these Great fundamentally strong stocks. Uh, thank you very much. That's about it from our end, and we open to questions now. Thank you. Great. So I guess it was really an amazing presentation, and for the first time, we have uh, tried to tap an international stock as Together Investing Club, and both of these stocks were really amazing. Uh, thank you, Pranav. Thank you, Karan. 
Uh, so guys, we're open to question and answers. If you have a question, you can either type it down in the chat box or you can simply unmute yourself and go ahead and ask a question directly to Pranav and Karan. Anyone, please go ahead. Uh, also the club one and two and three members, if you're online, please go ahead and ask questions that you might feel are relevant. So okay. the one on projections page or the one, the previous slide. Okay. We have a question from Raghav. It's three o'clock. Any questions, anyone? Uh, hello, I have a question for Pranav. Yes, Sarpik. Uh, I want to ask, uh, you showed me some percentage of institutional investors. So I want to ask, is it a total percentage of all the investors around the world or what? I just didn't understand about percentage. What, of a, what, of what? Percentage of what? So the institution, Pranav, you want to go ahead? Yeah, so it's a combination of both foreign investor, foreign institutional investors and foreign individual investors and domestic institutional investors and domestic investors. So it's uh, basically total percent uh, from 100. Yeah, that's it. So what is the difference between institutional investor and domestic investor? So institutional investors is basically any, any company or any institution investing in Procter & Gamble or Walmart and Achha. Uh, individuals are basically individual entities. Institution means any corporation or company yes. investing, right? Yeah. 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 And, and then you. within institutional as well, just to add on to Pranav, you have like the foreign and the domestic one as well. And here we've just combined the two. And to answers, answer Shitij's question. Uh, before so, we move on, uh, so I think institutional investors are also portfolio management companies, fund houses companies that pool money and manage that money globally or uh, domestically. So this was also include mutual fund houses or this will also include hedge funds or uh, pension funds or any money that has been pooled of common people and then deployed as an institution. Okay. So uh, basically in investors, there are institutional investors and individual investors or uh, who are not basically affiliated with these institutions, right? So either you can buy Procter and Gamble directly yeah. where you buy some shares or you invest in an hedge fund and that yeah, buys I do it money. through an institution. So that is an institution. In both ways, you'll have to do it through an institution. Individually okay. also, you'll have to buy it through a stockbroker or a merchant bank or, or, or an investment mm -hmm. bank. And when you're pooling funds or when they're pooling funds and parking it, so institutional money basically is smart money or it's basically managed by funds. Okay. Pranav, over to you. Yeah, so answering Shitit's question, how can we invest in these stocks? So there are a couple of ways. There's an app called Vested, where, which allows you to invest in uh, US stocks, or you can uh, directly open an account in ICICI, which has a tie up with a US bank. Also, Zerodha Zero, is about to uh, launch this feature where you can invest directly in US stocks. Um, I'll address the next one for Virendra. Yeah. So these shares are purchased in US dollars, but like I mentioned that your, your source of money will be coming from like India, like your INR will get converted in this first, and then you'll be able to invest if you're investing from India. But if you have links and direct access to US dollars or have a bank account or similar to DMAT account here in India for like foreign investing in that currency, you can invest using US dollars directly. Uh, for Raghav, Raghav, I'm just taking a look at the calculations for us and then I'll just address your questions after I just have calculated the CSR myself. Uh, Pranav, mm. the next one till then, I'll just take a look at the... Yeah, it's ICICI securities. And to answer Babita ma'am's question, what's the taxation on such capital gains? Right, so uh, if it's a long-term capital gain that is if you uh, hold your security for more than 24 months then you will be charged 25 percent on the capital gain and if it's a short-term capital gain that is less than 24 months then you will be charged according to your income slab 
and as per dividends uh, you will be charged a flat rate of 20% by the us government so the capital gains are charged by the indian government so can uh, i appreciate? i want to ask one more yeah don't sir please go ahead so i just wanted to ask any one of you if can answer this walmart i can look at the projection first 5 years is showing me 20% return and next 5 years is almost doubling or more than double should i invest after 5 years then who would like to take that current pranav so i mean there are a lot of other factors that we need to consider what will change in these five years especially when you're investing in like an international stock as well uh i mean the currency fluctuation also comes into picture uh like in the long run but what we saw here was especially because of like covid 19 it had dipped down to a very low level and now was moving towards its intrinsic value which is like a good value that we should purchase at i'm not sure if it's on a very good trajectory right now you might cross that value and after five years uh the figures might change this forecast is based on the projections and the figures that we have provided provided that you investing at such amounts and entering into the market at these areas and like i personally like i am a stockholder for procter and gamble as well and i've seen that it has grown like almost 6 or 7% within the past two weeks itself so that's why we are recommending and all these numbers are based on provided it's been done right now of course the calculations will change Oh. but run is uh, is not cheap actually procter and gamble is almost already at its lifetime high it's not cheap right now it is at is only 4% away from its lifetime high and in last 5 years when the time was absolutely per- perfect it grew by 50% and now the cost of sales as you mentioned is almost 50% of the revenue yes sir. you mentioned that competition is also growing are we seeing the same growth in next 5 years so strictly based on the past two quarter results that we have received they are going to like self calculate the projected values for them as well because no one had expected such things to happen into the firm as well like i mentioned that they were earlier facing high competition amongst competitors in certain product areas but now with like the covid sales the figures that you see from the last quarter has changed drastically from like the averages that we were taking for the previous 10 years as well so this was strictly because just to capitalize on this thing that's happening into the market right now and i'm i'm sure like 5 years ago there was a window as well and then you might find a window again 5 years from now but it's just about like like what i've learned from you guys is like you can never time the market perfectly but it's always better to like get in and around an area based on your own calculations and assumptions whatever you know about the market current you. can you current can you yes, also sir. tell everyone about the safety margin that you've taken based of roi oh sure sir so the return on equity that we mentioned here we have taken a lower return on equity than what we have told in the table just to keep it on a safer side and also when we calculate the earnings per share uh, we usually for these calculations take the last quarter ones but for each of these different stocks one was extremely high than like the previous 10 year average that the company was giving and one was extremely low so we took a decent average just to keep everything as a safe side margin of course like if we were to take last quarter's earnings for procter and gamble your 1 lakh rupees turns to 14 lakh according to that calculation but again keeping it realistic and also keeping the things like you guys mentioned as well that there might be a lot of changes that might be happening over the years uh, we have taken safety margin figures like lowering the 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 return on equity percentage as compared to what it is right now and also uh, taking a reasonable Uh, expectation of the earnings per share that is about it's very good karan very good karan just one last question you mentioned the cost of sales is almost 50% of the revenue yes what is the standard in this industry uh so definitely not 50 but uh, we haven't looked at the number it just seemed like a major chunk of the expense that came for procter and gamble which was like one major problem that was mentioned across all the research documents that we were seeing yes, and is. yeah yeah and their main argument was that they are safely recovering a major chunk of it because of these sales but this was going to continue approximately for a few more years to come provided if they wouldn't have uh, immediately managed a lot of this expenses because of the covid that they're trying to like capitalize on these disinfectant markets and also like the essential products so again the, the the speed has reduced but it was supposed to continue on the same track if such an event could have happened all right thank you very much 
Thank you, Atul sir. Uh, anyone has any other questions, guys? So one of the questions that was asked was how can one take exposure in a company that's listed on New York Stock Exchange while you're in India? Uh, well, the most uh, credible way of doing it is you can open a DMAT account with ICICI Securities and they have a tie up with Sexo Bank and they will help you bridge your ICICI Securities account to a Sexo Bank account, which is also a trusted global partner. And you can go ahead and invest in any stock in five major indexes over the world, New York Stock Exchange, London Stock Exchange, Dubai, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Japan. But uh, you will have to pay different charges for all the exchanges. So majorly people just stick with New York Stock Exchange or a, a couple of more exchanges that they would like to do so. But taxation in itself is a very different domain when you're dealing in international stocks. So please make sure that you hire a credible and relevant chartered accountant uh, who understands international stocks, who understands capital gains, because we can tell you on what stocks are, but we cannot be sure about what the capital gains are going to look like. Uh, because policies keep changing, uh, international policies also keep changing. India also keeps changing the policy with uh, with dividend taxation. When you take when you when you get dividend from an an alien company, a company that's not listed in India is called an alien company. So when you get dividend from an alien company, the taxation keeps changing. Even this quarter, uh, or even in this term, uh, the finance minister has announced uh, during the budget. Nirmala Sitamanam has announced an uh, alien dividend. The, there is a deviation in the alien dividend taxation calculations that they have shared. So the idea simply is these are the projections on the company. What will be the actual realized gains would completely depend on what your tax labs are and how, how, you, how exactly are you doing. And there was also another question by Vidali that I'll just want to address. Yeah. Uh, she, she asking like, can we go bio research and buy like Procter and Gamble health and hygiene, which is listed in India. So Dali, for the qualitative part that we mentioned, yes, the firm as a whole, like Procter and Gamble, like the brand and the image that the firm has, of course you can do for the qualitative, but the numbers and the figures for Procter and Gamble health and hygiene. And of course the management issue in the call, uh, sorry, not the issue, but the qualitative side, the management part, the ones who will be leading the India company might be a bit different, but the overall entity in the parent company would be the Procter and Gamble company, which is like in the U S. So yes, the numbers and figures would definitely change for the health and hygiene part of it. It's a different business altogether and yeah. it should be looked at as a different business. So the entire research that, that they've done for PG, NYS, uh, New York Stock Exchange should be replicated on Procter & Gamble Health and IG National Stock Exchange. So, so I can add something to it if you want. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, in company like Procter & Gamble, at least India, you know, uh, nobody at management level is hired uh, from anywhere but IMs. So the quality of management, when you talk about quality of management, is very very high in India. It's higher than the US. I can tell you that. Great. Any other questions, guys? Uh, great. Aditya, you wanted to share something, so I'm turning off the screen share. Over to you. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, just to brief, we did this particular presentation because we wanted to make sure that everyone understands uh, that. You know, whatever we're going through during during the ten weeks of training and during the mentoring program is not uh, is not it's it's relevant to the global world, but it's not limited to Indian markets. We'll be taking a case study of Indian markets and we'll be doing Indian markets, yes, but it's relevant to the global world and it's relevant to every asset class that we're talking about in detail or when we're discussing in detail. Uh, the idea simply is that all the formulations that we took, for example, I guess Virinder Upadhyay sir asked. If, we, if I have a DMAT account in US and if I have a bank account in US and I want to directly purchase from a DMAT account in US, uh, it would completely depend on what your source of funding is. If your source of funding is in US dollars, then all these ratios and everything would change. If your source of funding is in INR, if your source of funding is, is in Indian rupees, then the ratios remain constant because we will be talking about the opportunity costs or the capital costs that we have been incurred to invest in a particular asset. Uh, so we'll be launching our fourth batch on 26th of July, 2020. For those of you who would like or interested or need more information, please connect with the person who has invited you. Uh, my name is Emmanuel and you can also directly connect to me or to Aditya. And that's all for today. If anyone has any other doubts or if anyone wants to ask anything about Together Investing or wants to share anything, the, the forum is over, open to you. Thank you.
Emmanuel sir, regarding the Procter and Gamble share. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir, regarding the Procter and Gamble share, is uh, <coughs> does it have uh, as stiff a competition it has in India with uh, Unilever? Yes, sir. Both in US and in India. It's as tough as it is in US, as tough as it is in India. Okay. India is a little more challenging uh, because India has ITC and Merico also. Okay. So in US, uh, so India is a little more tough market for PNG and HUL, uh, but I think they're doing fairly good because India is in the, is a consumer market, and that is why you will see all the global brands getting attracted to India. But the idea simply is uh, they're still sharing a pie, and it's it's a tough fight between PNG and Unilever, both in India and in US. Also, when we look at other economies, uh, I don't know if Karan have Pranav have uh, you know have covered any other economy. But if you see at any economy where these two firms exist, they have a tough fight everywhere. They they are they are throat to throat everywhere. People uh, <coughs> with these two companies and product people have their uh, personal preferences and modes as uh, they both mentioned. So, uh, is there any other company in US as well uh, in this, which is a very big player? Karan, uh, is there any other company in USA uh, which is a sizable player compared to these two companies? Um, so, like I can speak for Walmart confidently that for the offline stores, they have a limit in terms of the competition for a certain product category area in terms of with Target and Costco. And but for the e-commerce one, they're fairly new but have been growing year by year. But they're trying to like continue on the same trajectory as Amazon and hopefully like reach that level here. But of course the other companies that I mentioned for offline stores as well are also equally growing into like the online sector as well. And if you like talk to any US citizen, like the very fact, like I mentioned that a Walmart is within a 15 minute radius for every household. That's what they claim. Uh, there's always a competition between like a target or something similar who's offering a similar business model. But since this is like the largest in terms of name and it's like a household name that everyone knows, I think they have a slight edge over all these companies, especially when it comes to like the brick and mortar area and they're getting there in the e-commerce. I don't know if you have something for PNG. Karan, what Lakshya is actually trying to ask is if there is a bigger player as compared to PNG and HUL. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. I thought that we were talking about HUL, but Unilever in USA. Yeah, I mean, Unilever and PNG. Um, not really. No, there is none. Okay. okay. PNG is actually the second largest FMCG company in the world. So, second largest, so you can't expect a bigger competitor than him. Uh, the biggest FMCG company is Nestle. Okay. And, which is into a completely different product line. Okay. So, competition okay. what, what, what rank is Unilever, sir? Sir, so Unilever Hoga. Top 10 may not be, sir. But if you compare like Walmart, uh, because it's B2B business, uh, that's why it's not reflecting probably in the top FMCG companies in the world. But otherwise, if you look at their uh, revenue or turnover, it's uh, around half a trillion dollar every year. There's uh, no prob there's no <laughs> prob probably from an Indian's perspective, I always thought that Unilever is bigger than Procter & Gamble. Sir, so worldwide, if you see it, I don't think it will come. Okay. What That's largest true. FMCG is Nestle, actually. Good to know, sir. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Great, hey guys. So, we end our presentation here. But just before you leave, we have a competition around the corner. We are doing a, a Beat the Street competition. You can select five stocks out of the Nifty 100 stocks. And the winner by the end of the week is rewarded a gift voucher. It happens every week. Uh, so you're most welcome to just follow our Instagram account and uh, all the details are there on Instagram. So please go to our Instagram account and on, in the bio, there is a link. There is a Google form. You can just fill the Google form and that is being considered as your participation. And we announce winners every Friday on the evening. As soon as the markets close uh, before 530, we try to announce the winners uh, every Friday evening. Uh, that's it for today. A anyone has anything to ask, anything to discuss? You can connect with the person who has invited you for today's invitation. It's an invite only session today. Uh, it's only for close knit people. And for those of you who would like to understand about how, what together investing is and how we operate, please connect with Aditya or with Emmanuel.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Atul. Sir. Thank you so much, guys. Lovely presentation, guys. Congratulations. Very Thank good, you. so much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.